What's up YouTube, Cliff here from The Sunday Drive, and today we're gonna to be changing out the coil packs and spark plugs on this 2007 Lexus ES350. So we pulled all the fault codes before starting this install so we could have a reference point, and as you can see, that all six cylinders are showing a misfire detected. However, the fault code that gives away which cylinder is actually having the issue is this last one, which unfortunately was kind of covered uh, when I did my screen capture, but P0351 powertrain ignition coil A primary slash secondary circuit. So the way that you can tell which cylinder is, is the last digit in this code. So it ends in a one, P0351, that corresponds to cylinder one. But while we're doing it, we're gonna replace all the spark plugs and all the coil packs. So as we mentioned, we are going to be changing out the plugs and coil packs on this 2007 Lexus with the V6 motor. Now this V6 motor was used in a lot of Toyota models, including Lexus, and we'll list all of those models down below in the description of this video. As you can see, we are using the NGK spark plugs and you want these gapped to 0.044. Now for the coil packs, my friend was on a budget um, and he wanted to get the cheapest ones he could find that would work for his vehicle. Now these six coil packs were less than one individual coil pack from Toyota. So I don't know how well these are gonna hold up or how long they're, they are gonna last, but he does drive about 40,000 miles a year, so we should see pretty quickly how they're gonna hold up. And if and when these do fail, we will make sure to tag the top comment in this video to let you guys know how long they lasted before they failed. So we may get lucky and they might last a while, but we will see and we will have these linked in the description. So if they work out, this is a great cheap alternative. However, you do generally get what you pay for, so we will see in the long run how these hold up. In preparation of doing this video, I was looking up some guides uh, for changing spark plugs on this V6 motor, and most of those have you removing your intake manifold. However, this is not necessary. You can actually remove some of the shrouding um, up underneath of your wipers and access the area that you're gonna need to. So that will save you a little bit of work. It is a little bit tighter of a fit and a little harder to get back there. So if you wanna get back there easily, removing the intake manifold will definitely do that. However, it is not necessary. So right up front, you have your three coil packs right here and obviously the spark plugs under those. These are super easy to get to. The challenging ones are the ones at the back behind the intake manifold right here. After removing the engine cover, you're gonna to wanna to remove these two plastic covers on either side of your motor. They're held in by a whole bunch of push pins. So if you pop out the center part right here, I like to use like a flathead screwdriver, and then you can take like a pry tool and pull the whole clip out. And then right next to the hood support right here, this panel will pop out. And then underneath of here is one additional clip we need to remove. It's a little different than the other ones, but the same idea. Pop out the middle and then you can remove it. And then this panel will just lift out. Now, most likely at some point there were clips right down here and over here, however, they are no longer on this retainer. So you may have to move two additional clips that are, under, are underneath this front shroud. Now we're gonna remove the top part of the shroud and in order to do that, you need to remove both of your wipers. Now it's a good idea to mark where the wipers are currently sitting. Um, obviously you should probably have them in the downward position. Um, in this case, you can kind of see a line from the dirt that was there. Take a 14 millimeter wrench and take off the top retaining nut on the wiper. So you're gonna to wanna to press down here and then pull up. And then remove the other 14 millimeter. There are two remaining clips that hold in this back shroud. They again have a center pushpin part, but in this case, it's held in by a Phillips style pushpin. Now you can lift out this shroud. Remove the strut brace, it's held in by two 14 millimeter bolts on either end. Now it's a good idea to check out your front coil packs here so you can have an idea of what the ones look like at the back since it's a little harder to see them. Um, each one has an electrical connection and they are held in by 10 millimeter bolts. Now on the back ones on this car, there are retaining clips 
that go right here. However, whoever worked on the car previously broke all of the retaining clips on these front coil packs. So um, there's nothing to press down on up here. These are just gonna pull straight off. This main wire harness snakes behind the motor and obviously that's where the electrical connections are coming off for the coil packs. In order to release this, we don't need to release this front one, but I'm just gonna show you how it works so you can release it at the back. But you're gonna wanna pry this tab out right here and then this will lift off of that metal stanchion. Right here is that plastic clip we just showed you up front. So it's holding this wire loom in place. There you go, so we got that released. Right here is another harness. We've already disconnected this electrical connection right here. Um, there is a tab right on top. You're gonna press that in and then you can pull this plug out. And then we use the screwdriver to slip under here and release this part of the clip that's holding the wire in. So instead of removing the entire clip um, with the wire inside, we just lifted up this part and now the wire is loose so that we can access all those coil packs. On your first coil pack on cylinder one is a metal bracket that actually holds your intake manifold in place. So this goes right over top of the coil pack and spark plug, so you do need to remove this. It's held in by two 12 millimeter bolts. There's one right here and then the other one is at a 90 degree angle to that first one and it goes into the intake manifold. They were pretty tight, so it does take a little bit of effort to get these broken free. And then we're gonna remove the top one. Here's the bracket. It's installed in this orientation, so here's where it connects into the manifold. Now some of this is definitely going to be hard to see. You'll have a little bit better visibility when we're doing the front ones. Um, but back here you do have the retainer clip on those electrical connections. You're going to want to press down and pull off. So here's the plug that we just removed and as you can see it has this black retaining clip right there. And what I like to do is take a pick tool underneath and lift up on that front part and then pull the plug off. We've actually determined that we need to fully remove this clip right here. So it's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt right up under this wire right here. So we just broke that free and now we're gonna pull that off. We should have a little more access to that last coil pack under there. Now we're gonna take the same 10 millimeter socket we just removed that nut with and release the coil packs. And this is the coil pack that's been giving us all the trouble. Coil pack number two. Looking at this coil pack, you can see that there's oil buildup on it. And this is most likely caused from a leaking valve cover gasket. So that's something you're definitely gonna wanna replace as soon as you can, if you see something like this when you pull your coil packs. Now I would suggest leaving your plugs in until you are ready to replace them. You don't want anything falling down in there. So as soon as you pull a plug out, basically put a new plug into that same cylinder. All right, and that's the last coil pack on the hard side out. This is a spark plug removal set or socket set that I picked up off of Amazon. Um, these are magnetic and swivel heads. Uh, which are really nice and really help get into tight areas like this. You're going to need a 5 8 socket to remove the spark plugs. So in this case, we've already checked and we want to use the 11 inch extension. And again, it's just got this nice swivel head on here and it lets us get this down in there despite the restricted space. So just angle that swivel head and it will let you get down into the sleeve. Now I've already broken this one free before shooting the video. So I'm just gonna pull this one back out. So there's the first spark plug removed and we're gonna immediately put the new spark plug in that hole to prevent anything from falling down in there. Here are our new plugs that are getting ready to go in and we are gonna link these in the description of the video. Now we're gonna leave these at the factory gap uh, since these are all set the same. However, it is always a good idea to take a thickness gauge such as this with a whole bunch of different thicknesses and go in and check and make sure the gap is set properly for your vehicle. The thickness gauges I just showed you are preferred to this dial uh, style one where you will slide the plug along until it reaches the point where the gap is. 
The problem with that is you can actually get this stuck pretty easily and you can damage the tip. And you never wanna to try to gap with a tool like this because when you go to do that, and I will demonstrate on the plug that we just removed, if you try to gap with this, you risk damaging these tips, which can be pretty fragile. Instead, you wanna take a gapping tool such as this, which has these little cutouts right here and lets you grip the plug at the base right there so that as you adjust that gap, you aren't touching the tips and risking damaging those. Reinstall your new plugs and torque them down to 13 foot-pounds or 17-ish newton meters. So this valve cover gasket definitely needs to be replaced. It's leaking right onto this spark plug right here. That's just, that's a lot of oil. We're worried too much about it. And then reinstall the 10 millimeter bolts and torque these down to seven foot pounds. After doing the back, the front is super simple, so we're just gonna time lapse this real quick, get these three front plugs and coil packs changed out. That's the hard part of the install done. All we have left is to reinstall the shrouds and wiper blades. But before doing all that, we went ahead and took our little Bluetooth code scanner, which is really handy with the Torque Pro app, and cleared out the code. So we're gonna drive the car for a little bit, make sure nothing comes back. But as far as installing the coil packs and plugs, we are done. So that is all behind. And as I said, we did not need to remove that intake manifold. So a little bit harder to get behind this, but without filming and everything, we probably could have gotten this done in under an hour. Um, so not bad at all. As I mentioned, we are gonna pin that top comment with how these coil packs are doing. So if they fail relatively quickly, we definitely will pin that as the top comment. Um, if they hold up for a while and are doing great, we'll just kind of keep you guys updated with how long they've lasted. So every five to 10,000 miles, we'll just update that top comment. So definitely be checking that out. If these hold up great, hey, and you can get six coil packs for 60 bucks, that's fantastic. So as we mentioned, we'll link all of these parts and tools used in this video down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions about the installation, please definitely leave those below and we will do our best to get back to you. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you here.